Yeah. 
has no shortage. To There's nothing lacking. Sometimes I think we come into meetings and we think, well, God can do a little bit. Can I tell you something? Having faith in God and having God's faith is two different things. The devil knows it.
the whole atmosphere. It changes your whole life. It changes your whole progress. Progress. It changes everything about you. Because then when trials and things and situations pop up, you you're not operating out of yourself. You operate out of Him. It's amazing. Your girl 
mindset can comprehend or capture how much God wants to do for you. Some of us can only get to the place of what we've always heard people say. But God wants you to understand tonight. He has something just for you. It's one thing to know God wants to come in your life. But it's another thing to know God wants to come in and take over your life. Do you know what He wants from you? See, it's one thing to get to the mountain that Mark chapter 11 is talking about and look at that mountain and say, well, I know God's a mountain mover. It's another thing to walk up to that mountain that comes into our lives every day and say, mountain, be gone. Why? Because the same authority that you gave Jesus Christ, you gave us. See, it's one thing to get to the place that when you hear a bad doctor's report, that you say, oh, man. There's another thing when the doctor's report comes and you say, oh, but God. See, it's one thing to let the pressure slip in and take over our lives and just get us to a place that we can't hardly function. It's another thing that when it shows up, we say, but God is the God of everything. This is the amazing thing about God. The pressure can't say where he is. Because with the power of God, it, it runs out darkness. Do you really understand tonight, in this building, God wants to raise up people of light. In this building, God wants to raise up people that have head-on collisions with darkness. But that's impossible until you get to the place of moving past the God who can to the God who will. And you can get past this thing. He's the God who can for someone else, but he won't for me. See, sometimes we get stuck there because people have told us that we're this way, we're that way. We'll never see this. We'll never have that. Can I tell you something? If I wanted a lot of people thought about me, I'd put a long time around. And what I understand is what God thinks about me. And what I understand tonight is in this room, God wants to raise up torches of fire. So what for? Because outside of this building, tonight in this city, is darkness. Outside of this building, tonight in America, is darkness. Outside of the school tonight, and every corner, every corner, everywhere you look, there's darkness, there's problems, there's situations, there's places that the devil's trying to control. But what he, God is trying to do is to wake his church up to a place of identity so they would know who they are in him and he, who he is in them. And then they would understand not only is he in them, but he will move through them. When that light comes on in the church, everything's going to change in America. Everything. Why? Because there's going to be a constant collision. Every day. <coughs> Why? Because this is what's going to happen. Every day on the streets, darkness is going to collide with light. <laughs> Boom! Who is? Who? Oh, every time. Don't believe you go home tonight, close all the lights off, turn all the windows, shut all the windows, turn everything off, make it as black as you can, and then get the little smash you can find this light. Guess who's going to win? That little match. 
that little light is going to blow out every bit of that darkness. And it's going to win. And I'm telling you, we are living in an hour that God is trying to shake the church, awake the church, shake, shake, how he's got to do it, pour us out, pour us back in, throw us out on the street, pour us back in. I don't care how he does it, but I know he's doing it. And the reason he is doing it is because he's trying to get the church to understand that darkness has controlled this earth long enough. Long enough we talk about all the bad. You ever been around that? I mean, in the church house. Why so bad? Why so bad? Well, why is that? Could it be because we've never understood who God really is? Let me share a little bit about this. Can I tell you tonight in heaven, there is no man? Can I tell you in heaven tonight, there's no sickness, there's no, there's no addictions, there's no stronghold, there's no lack, there's no lack of need, there's no lack of love, there's no lack of comfort, there's no lack of grace and mercy, there's no lack in heaven tonight. There's no loneliness in heaven. There's no lack of peace in heaven. All that stuff is there. We didn't tell the disciples to pray. Your kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth. As it is in heaven. Why? Because this is the table. Huh? And the devil just don't know it yet. <laughs> and most church folk don't know it yet. Yeah. Why, how do you know? Well, Paul said this. Oh, sleepers! Awake! He wasn't talking to the lost. He was talking to the church. Most church folk don't even understand. This is a hostile takeover. And what's about to happen is God's church is about to turn on the switch. And this time it's going to get broken off. Because God is starting to turn it back on. So we had a switch for years. Never. We turned our switches on in church. And then we did a little light shine. And then we go back outside and flip the switch off because it was too dark out there and we didn't want to fire it. Can I tell you something? There's really not a fire with the light and darkness. He has no equal. Uh, there is no talk of war tonight. The only battle that's going on tonight is in within yourself. And let me just help somebody while we're here. Most of the people who will lose this battle will disqualify their self. God's turning on lights. The collision is about to take place. The church is about to wake. The sons of God are about to appear. And everywhere we go, light and darkness is about to collide. Uh, what happens when God's glory covers the face of the earth?
and pours out into vessels of that hope. And it's as fast as it comes in, it comes out. What do you mean? I'll tell you what I mean. People come in, we lay hands on them, the glory comes. Heaven opens on them. He pours in them. They get filled up so much that sometimes they get drunk. Because when you have a little bit of wine, a little bit of wine wins. The problem of in a few days, it's gone. Why is it? Broken vessels. Broken vessels. They're not understood. That God does not want to pour in you. He wants to heal you. So we've been so caught up in the church coming and getting a feel good that we didn't understand that he wanted us to come and get delivered, set free, healed. Big difference. I've seen people come up that I knew was broken, hurt, but they didn't want to let go of it, but they wanted to be touched by God. And it's one thing to be touched by God, but it's another whole different thing to be transformed by God. You can come tonight and I can pray for you before we leave here and God can touch you and you can leave this building because of free will and stay exactly the same as you was. Only thing different is you'll feel God. Or you can decide tonight because the anointing destroys the yoke. But let me tell you something about the Lord. It really destroys it. It's still a choice of the person. That person can go right out the door and throw that right away. I've seen it a thousand times. God touch, heal, set free, deliver, and walk out the door. And they do not keep it because of free will. I've had people come in and get touched and get told and wrecked, and they come back the next night and say, Well, it's just been one of them days. Oh, hell, I'm trying to figure out how you lose it. How does it leave that fast? Sisters and whales, whales that have hopes, slow school leaves. Because they refuse to fix the problems. They just want to fill it. I tell you something, God was never meant to be a fool. He's not a quick fix. He's an old one. God's always been hope. He said, I wish that you would be transformed. Your old man would die and your new man would come alive. We, we come to these meetings and we keep using prayer, we keep building God, we keep falling out, we keep shaking, we keep rolling, we keep tumbling, we keep feeling shaking. I'm, I'm still off. I see people flow through the air and jump over the air and fall through the air. My wife does go around for breakfast, she went there, and they went through five rows of chairs. That's awesome, whatever. What I want to know is when you got up, we should never be the same. Was you never the same? Did you not do anything to think about his goodness? Did you not do anything to think of how great he is? Did you not do anything? Would you not let the enemy take over your mind for a second because you understood that God is in control? Now see, if all you do is keep coming and keep filled up and losing, fill up and losing, fill up and losing, fill up and losing, and you go back out these walls, you will get in a cycle inside the church. There's church folk in cycles. They like how God feels. Everybody does. But if all you get is the feeling and you don't get the transformation, you're missing part of it. If you don't get something that comes and overtakes you, Paul understood. He says, I am a bond slave to Christ. You need to understand what that really means. What he said is, I am not my own. I was bought with a price. This is a small thing. Y'all got that big leather. Give your keys. I'm going to take it for you. You make them go for it? No. This is a chore. Right? Okay. 
Watch this. Well, why, why, why do you, every time the enemy comes, give over to him and act like he owns you? I'm kind of preached tonight. Because, see, you need to understand something. Every person in here who's saved was bought with a price. You're not your own. And if God was giving out receipts, he would have you receive you and say, guess what? You no longer belong to you. I own you. I have the title to your life. And then the next time that the devil came, <laughs> you remember this little girl I showed you your drawer? None of you remember. I didn't see any keys or no problems. You would meet the enemy. Right there in that moment of your life. When he's trying to come in and take over. He's trying to come in and control. He's trying to come in and make you depressed again. He's trying to come in again and make you down again. He's trying to get you where you don't want to go to church again. He's trying to get you where you don't want to serve the Lord again. He's trying to get you to bow and eat. In that moment, right then, you would look him in the face and say, guess what? I'm not all. I was bought with a price. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Why is that? Because you don't have a choice. The only thing, oh, watch this. The only thing that's holding God back from helping you resist him is you resisting him. That was a great question. God will not intervene in your free will. Good or bad. If you allow the enemy to keep waltzing back into your life and taking back over, it will keep happening. I don't care how many times people pop in your head. I don't care who it is. It will not matter if it's the greatest evangelist in the world. Because God never goes against his word. But at the moment that you start resisting the devil, God will come flying into the situation and he will help you resist. Because you're his. You've been bought with a price. But with that price, he understands free will. He understands his work. And he understands you have to line up with what he already knows. And when you do that, everything changes. There's people in here tonight, you have, you have mind games that happen to people. The enemy torments your life. It happens all the time. You come and got saved, and then it comes back again. You come and got touched, and it comes back again. You want to know why? Because you've allowed it. You've never decided to say, Hey! It stops you. Today. It's over. And we've all been here. And what happens is we believe the lie. Just like you. And what happens, the enemy will come in some black monster, red sleep that you know is lady. He comes in the angel of life. He comes whispering to you, telling you what you want to hear. And then the next thing you know, he's back in your life and talking about it. But we have to understand how to get the victory once and for all. Turn on the light switch, become fire, become flames of fire. That does not go out. That oil that burns in our land that stays fired up all the time. And all we have to do to do that is come in agreement with God. Watch this. Did you not say come one with God? Jesus said this. He's here. He's on the earth. He's walking. And then he's talking to him. And he goes and he says, I don't do anything unless I first see my father with me. In other words, I'm the one with my father and the father. He goes on and says, I want the father, the father, the one with me. And he says, I wish that you would be one with me as I'm one with the father. Can I tell you something? This is so good. Holy Spirit's great, man. Can I tell you something? You can act like you're one with someone. You can even say you're one with someone. But the real test is, 
is when they move, are you done? I'll preach a burger yourself. <laughs> See, I've pastored a long time and I've preached a long time. And I've had many people say, oh God, Lord, send me here. I came to be a part of your ministry. Thousands. But what I found out about that is the thing that God taught me about him. You can say a lot with this. But whenever I turn, if you're still not there, you lied. And you never became one with the ministry. You became one with yourself. And it happens the same way with God. We can come to the altar and God can touch us and we can get prayer and it can be the most powerful thing that ever happened and it's the most awesome stuff that's ever happened. Oh, this is crazy. Oh, God. I've seen all kinds of stuff. I mean, literally, people flop up all the ground. Boosh! Bounce. Think they're dead. Just, they hit my back up. But my heart is when they're getting back up. Did they become one with God? Did that encounter move them to a place that their heart changed, their mind changed? <laughs> Most of their mouths have done change. But their heart and their mind and their actions. Now, now they get changed. And now when God moves, they're moving. And now when God says pray for the people outside of the wall, they pray for them. Now when God says give them a word, they give them a word. Now when God says turn right, go down to the left, the uh, three houses down, they get down the front. They go down to the third house and get out and get out the middle. They became one with the voice. The voice is the Holy Spirit. They became one with God. And they became one with Him in such a way that they understood the revelation that Paul had gotten when he said, I'm a born God touches people. 
people, transforms lives, and they get such glory. <laughs> if there's no change, you're probably not the real deal. Or you didn't let it sink all the way in, or you let it drain out. We really need to get saturated. I love the thought of God coming in our meetings in this time. He's going to come so strong into our meetings that we're going to get soaked. And the reason I love that thought, I don't know if you've ever been in a drenching rain, I have. And when you're in that drenching rain, your shirt gets so wet. That when you're walking and your shoes go, water squirting out the sides of them. Awesome. Awesome pattern. That's what I mean. But whenever you get that feeling and you're in the rain and all that water is just dripping off of you, what's going to happen when it starts to happen in our meetings? We come in our meetings. It's not just another feel good, not another little dad will do us, but we're getting drowned in. We're getting saturated. And as we leave, when we go down to the store to buy a star and get a little gas, and when we get out of the car, and our, and our shirts are dripping, dripping with the presence of God, dripping with the presence of God. It's coming off of us. We don't have to say a word. We're just pumping our gas, minding our business. And the car pulls in beside us. What happens? What is that? What is that I sense? What is that dripping off of you? What? What do I feel like heaven? It's showing up. What is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. The glory of God is covering the place of the earth. Now tonight I came with this agenda. Let's get saturated. Ha! <laughs> Let's get so messed up with God we can't go back. You know, let's just get so, so in that there's no return. And I, and I say this all the time, and I pray for some people. I pray for people come to you. Then when they leave, they can never go back to them. We all like that. They like them. You know, the Bible says that people love darkness whether they love it. They use lovers of the world and not lovers of God. It's all kinds of scripture for it. But I, I'm looking for them people that wants to come into meetings. And they get so messed up, they get so black, my God, that they can never go back to normal. Normal is this. I'm depressed on Monday, standing on fire on Wednesday, Tom Friday comes, I'm somewhere between uh, uh, down and out and up, and, and on Sunday I'm almost part of dragging in the church. No, I'm talking about you're getting so black that you can never get back to normal. And I'm talking about getting to the place that your mind just starts to think like heaven. You get to get up in the morning and start thinking, I wonder who's going to get touched by the power of God. I wonder who's going to get healed. I wonder who's going to bless you. My wife's been going around for that. She said, I'm just going to get blessed and blessed and blessed. She had something kind of word for it, but that's what she was saying. And you know what? I wonder when the church will get that. We just jump out of bed. My God, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm just going to start getting blessed. Everywhere God will get blessed. I'm going to get blessed. Somebody else is going to get blessed. Because you've got to understand what blessings are. Blessings flow out. No doubt. He said, if I can get it in you and I can get it through you, I'll get it to you. That's what he's trying to tell the church. That's what he's trying to tell us right now. Can I tell you something? The reason the presence of God has not been showing up like it should in our meetings is because God would bring it and he would saturate us and the presence would come and we would get all fired up in a meeting and then we would go outside and we wouldn't let it out.